Council for the people ready, Mr. Henderson. Ready for the people, Your Honor. Mr. Reynolds. Ready for the defense, Your Honor. You wish to make an opening statement, Mr. Henderson? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. The defendants in the case you are about to hear Dr. Walter Mead Taylor, Dr. Eduardo Lenzi, Dr. Nathaniel Kaufman, Dr. Adam Winters. These four men, these doctors of science, dedicated to probing the mysteries of creation, are charged with conspiring to commit a heinous murder. They are also charged with the commission of that murder. We will show that the four defendants conspired to murder Arthur Jensen, a security officer who was employed by the Egon Corporation. We will show that not only did they conspire to murder Arthur Jensen, but that this dreadful conspiracy was successful and they did in fact murder Arthur Jensen. Yes, there was a conspiracy to commit murder. But what Mr. Henderson doesn't know is that the victim of that conspiracy, Mr. Arthur Jensen, was himself a member of that conspiracy, a willing member. The word murder does not apply to his death, as we will prove beyond any shadow of a doubt. We may call your next witness, Mr. Anderson. That completes our case, Your Honor. The people rest. Dr. Taylor, did you shoot and kill Arthur Jensen April 9th last? I don't wish to answer that question. You are... On what grounds, sir? On the grounds, Your Honor, that it isn't relevant. If a crime was committed, then we're all equally guilty, no matter who pulled the trigger. The ground for refusal is entirely unacceptable. I direct you to answer the question. I decline, Your Honor, under the privilege of the Fifth Amendment. That ground is acceptable. Proceed. Dr. Taylor, are you acquainted with the events that led to Arthur Jensen's death? Yes. Please tell the court all that you can with regard to those events. It was April 9. My driver picked me up at the usual time, 8 a.m., and as usual, I drove. We covered the 17 miles from my home to the installation without incident. And as usual, we arrived at approximately uh, 8.45.
Morning, Dr. Taylor. Morning. The rest of my section all here? Yes, sir. I just took them down. Morning. Oh, morning, Wallace. Hard at it without your usual coffee. Dr. Winter suggested that we press on. Yes, he's worked out a fascinating study on how much our coffee breaks actually cost. Most ingenious. It seems you multiply the square root of minus one by the forever lost potential of our cerebral processes. You missed my point, Dr. Lindsay. I also calculated how much every minute we spend down here costs our fellow citizens. Oh, don't tell me. I don't think I can stand it. I know the answer, and it's frightening. Well, we've got a full 24 hours' work ahead of us, so I suggest we get at it. the computer result is everybody all right Lindsay yes I'm okay Kaufman dr. Kaufman all right Waller and you Jensen fine you okay dr. Winters dr. Winters I'll check the emergency power thank you One line open. Hello. Hello. Here. We're static, but no answer. Yeah, she has filled with rock. It's solid matter. Granite behind every square inch. The whole corridor must have gone. Who knows? Hello? Hello? It's still a connection. 
think we'd all better sit down. Try not to talk or move around too much. What are we waiting for, Doctor? I don't know. Some thinking seems to be in order. What happened? Probably an explosion in the XE section. Sit down, Jensen. We may need every cubic inch of oxygen we have down here. So, I'm going to use more oxygen standing up than I would sitting down? Yes. Sit down, Art. I'm sorry. It's not so much fear of dying. Well, I walked out on Maggie this morning. I slammed the door on her face. It's probably the last memory she'll have of me. Does he mean we're all dead here? For sure? Yes, we're all right. Nobody's hurt. Is the elevator shaft operational? Louder, I can't hear you. What about the corridor? How long? Can anyone give us an estimate of... Hello? 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 Went dead completely. But there's still a chance. The elevator shaft is open, and they'll have it operating in six to eight hours. What about the car? Caved in all of it completely. Granite. They'll be using a diamond drill large enough to get an air pipe through to us. I know some of the problems of that kind of drilling. You and I will take that problem. We'll work independently as a check on each other. Lindsay and Kaufman, you calculate how much oxygen we'll be using per hour and how much of it's available. Now, work independently. <laughs> Sorry, Walter, I know the approximate width and height of the corridor, but not the important figure, the length. 340 feet. You sure? Jensen, every 10 minutes, check the phone. You can start now. Don't these flashlights burn oxygen? No, and we're sweating in a good cause. Heat cuts down oxygen use. Turn your flashlight back on.
All right, open every canister, cylinder, tin, bottle, anything you find that might have air in it. Anybody know his metabolic rate? Minus 20. Anybody else? Are Dr. Kaufman and Dr. Lindsay trained in physiology? Dr. Kaufman has a degree in biology, and Dr. Lindsay is a brilliant organic chemist. So they were sufficiently trained to... Objection, Your Honor. Testimony on the qualifications of the other defendants should come from them, but not Dr. Taylor. Sustained. Exception, Your Honor. Dr. Taylor's knowledge of the abilities of these men is most pertinent to Dr. Taylor's defense. Proceed. Doctor, is your background such that you felt capable of solving the problem you set yourself? Just after I received my degree. Your doctor's degree? Yes. My first employment was in research at the Noma Oil Company. Most of that research was spent in drilling techniques. How long did it take you and Dr. Winters to calculate the time necessary for them to drill through to you? I spent nearly an hour on my figures. Dr. Winters, who, by the way, has degrees in both mathematics and geology, he also has an intellect superior to mine. Uh, he completed his calculations about 20 minutes ahead of me. What's your figure, Adam? And to drill through, insert a pipe, and deliver oxygen to us, I make it no less than 78 hours, no more than 85. Well, if we're wrong, it's quite a coincidence. I have 80 hours minimum, 87 hours maximum. Do we have a chance? Well, I had to make a guess on the number of centimeters of air trapped in the air conditioning system. Can we make it? No. Not according to my figures. What are they? We'll all be dead of anoxia in 64 to 70 hours. And? I settled on one figure, 65 hours. That's it. We haven't got a chance beyond it. Don't move, Art. Stay quiet. thinking the same thing. What else? God forgive us. God forgive us? For what? There are five of us, Mr. Jensen. If we were four, we might have a chance. Not, uh, not a chance that I'd be willing to take bets on, but a chance. So one of us has to die. Well, who makes that decision? No one. The man who draws the broken pencil dies. He takes that gun, goes to his cubicle, and with as much dispatch as decency allows, he shoots himself. Wait. I can't do it. Am I okay to take this and shoot me right now? I can't take part in anything that says I take my own life. Seems as if we have a conscientious objector among us. Or a volunteer. Depends how you look at it. We can't deny a man his principles.
We're wasting time. of the population of our little world down here declined to share the risk. No, I, I'm sorry, but I won't do it. Why didn't you say so before you drew? One of us has to stop breathing within minutes. Isn't that plain to everyone? Why don't we choose rationally? Why are we throwing dice when the rational answer is obvious? After all, society has years of education invested in us, plus millions of dollars. And Mr. Jensen just now got a free ride. Well, he's been getting a free ride from society. That's enough! Have... Art. This is your gun, so therefore I have to assume you were ready to use it. And you might have to in a few minutes. Each of us will draw a cap from the cup and put it in his pocket without looking at it. Art. cubicles. Whoever has the red cap has a decision to make. He can return here, use this gun to take his own life, or to execute, with the full consent of this group, any one of us he chooses. Are we all agreed? We'll wait a full two minutes after the shot. Return here, put the caps back into the cup, and wait. If it's suicide, then there's no problem. If it isn't, it's important that the identity of the man who pulled the trigger remain a secret. Now, time is the breath of life. Don't waste it. And God have mercy on our souls. Amen.
How many days were you and your colleagues in the hospital? Four days. Dr. Kaufman, five. And all of you were literally within minutes of death. Objection. Sustained. How many hours did you predict the drilling would take? <clears throat> A minimum of 80 hours. And how many hours did it take? 83 hours. Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. Sustained. Your Honor, I can subpoena any number of witnesses who will testify that it took... Do so. From Dr. Taylor, it's hearsay. Yes, Your Honor, because he was unconscious and nearly dead. Proceed. I have no further questions. Your witness, Mr. Henderson. Dr. Taylor, you just testified that if a crime was committed, you are guilty. Is that right? Yes. If a crime was committed, do I take it then that you don't regard murder as a crime? Objection. Argumentative. Mr. Reynolds, this case is argumentative. You're overruled. Exception. Answer the question, Dr. Taylor. I regard murder as a crime. Jensen was not murdered. Well, you just testified that he was. There were three shots fired. The man was brutally murdered, was he not? He consented to have his life taken. We all did. Now, that is execution, sacrifice, call it what you will, but it was not murder. Liar! Liar! You Doctor, you just used the word execution. Aren't you aware that execution is the prerogative of the law, of the state? You don't really believe that a private citizen has the same right to execute a man? 
We were not private citizens. We were five human beings cut off from this society, from any society. A citizen is a man who can take his problems to a court, a church, a corner policeman, a, an attorney. We could not. We were five men faced with a problem which created society in the beginning. Survival, Mr. Henderson. Survival. We traded one life to save four. Isn't it true that the project room in which you were trapped is only 17 miles from this city? Yes. Isn't it also true that citizens of this state, your fellow citizens, began working immediately to save you? Yes. You knew that at the time? Yes. And yet you still say you were not a citizen of this state. I do. Well, are you seriously contending that you and your co-defendants constituted some new sovereign state of your own? We were beyond the help of this or any other state. We formed one and acted to preserve our lives. Well, then I take it you believe there are situations where a man can decide whether to obey the law or make up one of his own. Ours was such a situation. The answer, then, is yes. Yes. <laughs> well, then, you would have to admit the possibility of other such situations. Yes. Where do we draw the line on such a right, Doctor? Isn't that what we're here for, to decide exactly that? Yes. Indeed, we are. Now, you say that you traded four lives for one. Do you know absolutely that all five of you could not have been saved? Yes. Absolutely? I was certain only four of us could live. And the results have proved I was... Don't go on with that, Dr. Taylor. You used the word certain. Now, I have here a copy of a science journal, Science and Philosophy containing an article written by you, the title of which is The Statistics of Truth. Did you write it? Yes. It was written five years ago. Have you changed your views? No. According to your article, scientific prediction is a matter of statistics. You say here that it is not absolutely certain that a cube of ice would melt in a glass of warm water. No, but I'd stake my life happily that it will. But in your opinion, it is not absolutely certain. Not in the language of science, in everyday terms, yes. Now, in your drilling calculations, you used some guesswork, didn't you? Yes. There is no guesswork involved with a cube of ice in a glass of warm water. Very little. And yet, using guesswork, you drew a conclusion about men working hundreds of feet away that you couldn't see and with such a certainty that you staked Arthur Jensen's life on it. Now, isn't that true? Objection. Mr. Henderson is not interrogating. He's making statements. Frame the last question more precisely, Mr. Henderson. Yes, Your Honor. Was your prediction on drilling time an absolute certainty or a statistical probability? Every prediction in the world is merely a probability. Was it impossible for you to be wrong, Doctor? It was highly improbable. Then it was on a probability, a statistical estimate, a guess that you staked Arthur Jensen's life? We staked all our lives because we had the courage to face life on its most elemental terms, to offer our own lives, our own lives, not just Arthur Jensen's, so that four of us might live. Do you call that murder? If you don't call it murder, doctor, just what do you call it? I'm a physicist, not a lawyer, not a political scientist. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. There will be no need for any further questions. Come in. Tom, I'd like to talk to you These about... chambers are part of my courtroom, Counselor. Sorry, Your Honor. 
In that case, I'll come right to the point. I think you're prejudiced in this action. You've kept it out of the written record, but not out of the clear view of the jury. You have your recourse. That's it, I don't. I can't prove in an appeal that your tone of voice has influenced the jury, but that's what's happening. As things stand now, they'll bring in a verdict of murder in the first degree. You'd want that? What do you think they should have done? Sat there and drowned in their own polluted air? I think they should have obeyed the law of the land. If that constitutes prejudice, make the most of it. You should disqualify yourself. Because I believe in the sanctity of law? Because you're grossly prejudiced in this case. All judges, thank God, are prejudiced in favor of respect for law. They devote their lives to it, as I have. You've prejudged this case. You flatly admitted it. I think you'd better leave now. But Dr. Walter Taylor testified under oath that his computations based on guesswork and assumptions might have been wrong. Isn't it interesting that no such doubts assailed him when he conspired to murder Arthur Jensen? When he lent his will to the collective decision that did finally murder Arthur Jensen? I want you to remember one simple fact. These four men have admitted taking the law into their own hands and condemning a man to death. They ask that we condone this heinous crime by regarding them as exceptions, as above or beyond our laws. Well, I am confident that you will reject this incredible arrogance. I'm also confident that you will find the defendants guilty of murder in the first degree. Thank you. Mr. Reynolds, are you ready with your closing statement? Yes, Your Honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, our distinguished attorney for the people has expressed himself as confident of your verdict, confident of what is in your minds and hearts. But I'm not. I honestly don't know what you're going to do. I don't know how you're going to decide this matter. I do know that you have all taken on a very heavy burden. This is not an ordinary case. No matter for just dumping the facts into the scales of justice and watching them tip one way or the other. The facts are not in question. These men made very difficult computations and predicted an outcome. You have heard expert testimony that their predictions were accurate within a matter of minutes. This is one of those moral predicaments which try our tested concepts of law, try our tested codes of behavior, Try them to the breaking point. I want you to do one thing. Just try to imagine yourselves in their predicament at the time of their moral crisis. Just try to imagine your human weakness, your human fears, your human helplessness. I submit their action was not weak, not fearful, not helpless, not arrogant. Five men acted in willing concert in order that four might live. Each man placed his own life in forfeit. That wasn't weakness or fear. It was a cry. 
an affirmation of life. A cry against the awesome power of death. And if we're fortunate, if we're blessed, that cry will sound on earth as long as men live. It is the cry that leads men to make and revere law. No news, Walter. I'll just stop by to see if you need anything. Oh, I'm fine. Well, it's hardly a snap decision. They've been out for 72 hours. I think that's hopeful. It might occur to them that you men only had minutes to make yours. They're finding it difficult to reach a verdict. That's important. The important verdict won't be made by the jury. It'll be made by us. So we'll live with till we die. Maybe I'm repeating myself, but so is everybody else around here. Where life and death is concerned, God decides, not man. These fellows set themselves up as little gods deciding on who lives, who dies. We electrocuted a man in this state just last week. Did God pull the switch? This state is under God. It says so on the books. That's a principle of our government. You think those men didn't pray? I doubt it. But we don't know that they didn't. I believe they did. Are we ready for another ballot? Order in this court. Jury reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor, we have. State your verdict. To the charge of conspiracy to commit murder, we find the defendants guilty. To the charge of committing murder, we find the defendants guilty in the second degree. To both verdicts, Your Honor, the members of the jury respectfully add a recommendation for leniency from this court. My judgment in this matter is prescribed by the statute of this commonwealth. The sentence to the charges and specifications is mandatory. Do any of the defendants in this case wish to make a statement jointly or singly before sentence on them is passed? Will the defendants please rise? With the authority vested in me by this sovereign commonwealth, I hereby sentence you to confinement in prison for a period of not less than 10 years and not to exceed 20 years. The prisoners will be confined in the county jail until such time as... Your Honor. I must make a statement to this court. May the court remind the prisoner that the time for statements is over? If your counsel appeals the decision of this court, then the prisoner may... There will be no appeal. This trial and this verdict have no validity because the evidence presented here was false. Even the admission made by the defense attorney is false. The truth has not been told here. I am the only one that knows the truth. Since under the law I have the right to set aside the verdict of this jury, I will allow this man to be sworn and heard. Bailiff? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name? Adam Winters. Be seated. Very well. Make your statement. There was a conspiracy, but the conspiracy was not carried through. These men did, as the law has it, conspire to commit, but they did not commit. Their plan failed. After we went back to our separate cubicles to wait, seven minutes passed. Every second was taking us closer to death, and nothing was being done. 
I decided there could be only one answer. I was certain who had drawn the red cap, and I knew that he had no intention of carrying out our agreement, that agreement upon which the lives of four men depended. You say I have broken the law of this sovereign state. Well, I, I make no apology for that. I also broke the law of that society of five of which I was then a part. If a crime was committed there, I alone am guilty. I took their law into my hands because their lives depended on it. I make this admission because I cannot stand by and see 30 to 60 years lost from the lives of these exceptional and dedicated men. Men at uh, society must in the You want any more to add, Dr. Winters? You may step down. Your Honor, I move that the jury's verdict be set aside. Motion accepted. Bailiff, will you have Dr. Winters taken to his cell? The three remaining defendants will be released on bail pending arraignment on a reduced charge. The jury is discharged with my compliments. This court is adjourned. I'd rather have had all of us die than one of us do what you did.